That's, that's pretty easy. I, 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 I think people should be, be dynamic. I think multiple sports is good. Um, of course, I got, you know, all, all of them teach you skills. If I, if I have to pick a favorite sport, gymnastics. If, 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 if I wanted to pick one sport that, like I, I, I had a guy say this to me, he was actually a Russian gymnast and, and coach under the Soviet time. You guys wouldn't know that, but yeah, Soviet Union. And basically understanding your own body you, you really have to understand your own body, how to, how to move yourself. I see people can't do a, a perfect cartwheel. It's crazy, but you can't do your cartwheel, control your own body, then you can try to control somebody else. And so he, his words were gymnastics is like the mother of all sports. And so that's what they did. They worked on a lot of flexibility, a lot of gymnastics, a lot of flipping, a lot of tumbling. You should be working on that, teaching yourself that stuff. And when you can control your own body, it's easier to control somebody else's too, you know? If you're kind of fumbling around, it's kind of tough. You know, multiple sports. Which style? I like them all. You know, when I was competing, I, I wanted to be the best in the world. Freestyle was where my mind was at. But now that I'm older, I like, I, I like them both. I really do. Like I don't, you know, just different guys have different goals. Some people want to be an NCAA champion. That's, that's a huge accomplishment. Some people want to be a world Olympic champion. That's a huge accomplishment. You know, it's just, so I, I, I really, my competitive years, I would have been freestyle, 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 right? But now I'm like, I, 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 I like the art of both of them. Yeah, I did Greco, I just, I didn't really like it. I did it, I wrestled in cadets, I don't know. Nothing against me. Who was your favorite wrestler growing up? I, I didn't have one, you know? People ask me that, that question. I really didn't have like, you know, they're like, who's your idol? I didn't have one. And it wasn't, it wasn't lack of respect for what somebody was doing. I wanted to be so good that I, I I kind of had this thing where I thought, if I'm idolizing somebody, it's tough for me to be better than that guy. Because my my goal was to be the best wrestler ever. That was I was that was my goal. It wasn't just to win the Olympics. It was actually this thing past the Olympics. So it was hard for me to idolize people by thinking that way. And that thinking is what got me as far as I did. I didn't get everything I wanted, but I got pretty close to where it felt good. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it just was, like, I played football, I played baseball, wrestling was always, you know, I got older, I didn't really like football as much, I really didn't like baseball, you know, I, I did it, tried it, and then you know, wrestling a lot. What's your, um, in your opinion, what's your most accomplished win? The most, like, accomplished? My biggest accomplishment, yeah. when I look back and look at all the ground I covered, mm -hmm. you know, I started at five. And I finished it like, I, I legitimately finished it like 28, 29. I had a little comeback then. But uh, when I look back at all the people who started and said, I want to do this, I want to be an Olympic champ, I want to be on a world team, I want to be an NCAA champ, by the time you get there, you realize oh, a lot of people go away. And like being there. I always tell this story, you know, I wrestled Bill Zadig. He's the national team coach now. It's funny you see the people that come through. I wrestled Bill Zadig at the Cadet Nationals when I was 16, and then I had to wrestle Bill Zadig in 2000 to make the Olympic team. Like, him and I were there. And then I got out, and then like six years later, Bill Zadig won the world title. Like, we both stayed around a long time. He stayed around a little bit longer than me, and got it done, you know? Like, so that's the biggest thing when you, and you don't appreciate it when you're doing it, but when you look back at the dang, I covered a lot of ground, and I, I got pretty close. You know, coach asked me what I look for to recruit. I, I, and I call upside, obviously, we're like, when we're looking at recruits, we look at upside. Is this guy, on his, is he peaking and on his way out? But I will tell you what we look for. Is the guy dynamic? And me and my coaches, like, it's, we get in arguments all the time. He'll like this guy and I'll like this guy. We might be looking at a, a 125 pounder. He'll be like, I like this guy, he does this. And I say, I might be like, that guy's in a box. That guy's completely in a box. That's as good as he's going to be. He's going to get a little bit better. He's not peaked yet, but he's going to be the same guy. And then I watch a guy, that that guy in the box is better than right now because maybe this guy's starting later, but I watch the way this guy moves, and I'm like, he's more dynamic. So when Coach was asking me, like, what do you look for? I look, is the upside still there? And is he dynamic? Can he wrestle in multiple positions? Does he look like he has the ability to wrestle in multiple positions? I, I like this story. When I took over uh, the program at Campbell, I was gobbling up recruits because we didn't have anybody. And there was this kid from Texas, Texas, not great wrestling, it's getting better. They don't have the depth of Ohio, Pennsylvania. And this kid was a two-time Texas state champ. 
and I brought him in to Campbell. His name was Quentin Perez. He finished his senior year. He was ranked 10th maybe going into the national tournament and COVID hit. He, he'd lost to the number one and number two in overtime during the year too. His freshman year, he was, um, and he was really long, really long like the Millers, really long, right? And I recruited him and I said, ah, oh, this guy's gonna be like maybe a 49 pounder. He got there, he was at 49. Grew to 57 during the year. His record was five and 25 his freshman year. Five and 25. And he got beat because he did stuff he did in Texas. He'd be on the bottom and he reached back and the guy would just boom, expose him. And he, we called him like a newborn giraffe. When they're born, they can't walk, they stumble. He was so long and growing and he was gangly and he was like stumbling and he'd give up his feet and stuff. He was five and 25 and his only wins of five wins were to Division Two or lower guys. The next year, he was 27 and seven. And the thing about Quentin, I said, he got beat because he would go to the wrong places. And then I'd say, hey, Quentin, don't reach back anymore. Here's the end. He'd be like, okay, he's coaching me, reach back. He saw the score shrink. And then, every time I opened the wrestling room door, the dude was in there. And I always say that, if you only do what your coaches say, like I have to manage a team and I manage individually, right? But we have you know, a bunch of guys on the team, it's hard to individually manage people. But I always tell them, if you just do what we tell you to do, you show up in the morning and you show up in the afternoon, and then when I'm getting in my car and I don't see a group of guys running because they're doing extra, because if you don't, if you feel you're out of shape, I always like, look, if you got tired, then you should know I'm out of shape. Go run, go swim, go do something. Nobody has to tell you that. Like you feel it. I should see a bunch of guys running down the road. I'd open the door every day and Quentin Perez would be in there. I mean, he was in there all the time, and he went from. Five and twenty-five to being top ten in the country soon the year got better. Went to Nashville three times and it was, it was a big story, you know, and he was coachable and he was dynamic the rest of the goofy position. What else? What was the purpose for wrestling outside of The purpose for wrestling outside of this. Rephrasing. Like, like the work on yourself outside of Well, we were talking in um so I go back Go back to the idol question. I want to be the best guy in the world. So if I were if I were here wrestling right now and say I was beating some guy, right? And say I was beating him, and, and, and let's say I knew I could single leg him to death. I was smart enough to know like, okay, I can take this guy down with a single. So I said I used to choreograph my practices. I would go in and say, okay, I'm gonna single leg this guy, then I'm gonna low single him, then I'm gonna duck him, then I'm gonna fire him into him, then I'm gonna I'm gonna fake him. I literally would wrestle in the position. And the other guy was trying to win, I would say. The other guy was trying to win in practice. I was never trying to win, I was trying to perfect things. I was trying to see if I could get you to step here so I could single it. Step here so I could fire me. You know, fake, put your head down so then I can front headlock and when you pop, I can double you. I was choreographing my steps. So when you're trying to win, I'm trying to hit technique. So naturally when I wrestled, and I did it when I competed too, when I started to wrestle, the other guys out there trying to win, like the younger guys earlier, and some guys crying because they lost the takedown, when you hear somebody crying because they lost a the takedown, they're caught up in winning. I was like, okay, why did I lose that takedown? Oh, in fact, I might get up and say, I'm gonna let that guy in on that shot again and see if I can stop it this time. That's what I was doing. I was, I recruited Jason Golf when I was at UNC. And I always knew Jason was gonna be good, right? And then later I talked to people in the practice room and I, I always asked like, hey, what's an off like? they like, Gary's pretty crazy. He'll actually shoot on a shot, allow himself to get completely extended, and then start wrestling again up from there. Because it does no help to you to just wrestle when things are right. You gotta wrestle from the worst position and see if you can win from the worst position. Earlier, these guys always said like, head down, we all say that's a bad position. What I say is if I got past the guy's head and hands and I got to his leg, I'll find a way to finish it. And it might be the only time I get there. You know, John Smith told me that in my first world championship. You might only get to some Russian's leg one time. Because they're that good. And that you have to finish that one because you're not going to get there yet. And so I was like, oh, we changed my thinking. It was a good shot. I didn't finish it. So I quarter that. What else? So we, we were discussing it. kids nowadays don't work on things by themselves. What advice do you have for that? Yeah, so it's, it's independence, right? Like, you know, and there's... A lot of people think, like, there's all these crazy stories about my relationship with my dad and stuff. Like, I, I, I hear this stuff all the time, but obviously you had to be in the, in the moment. So here's what I, I yeah, My dad was, like, independent. Like, what I just told you. 
If you're out of shape, you need to get your ass running. When I would go and compete, you brought up the Midlands. So I wrestled in the Midlands when I was in high school. It's a big deal for people, right? I had no coach. I had no coach in my corner. A lot of people don't realize that. Because the coaching was always done in the room. The training was done in the room. By the time you get out there, I tell my guys, look, I'm a glorified cheerleader by that point. Here's my job in the corner. Is to sway the referee if I can, get the calls if I can, right? And not calls in terms of cheating, but uh, if, I, I, if, there's a, if it's 50-50, I want the call going to my guy, right? And to keep you motivated, glorified cheerleader. Because the coaching is done in the room. It's all done in the room. The action's done in the room. It's just, uh, it's just getting the guy going and ready. So independence is huge. It's like, I would come in and I always did something extra. I did have rules. I had a rule for myself in practice. That when, when we said go, I would never take a water break. And when coach would say, and I might, I might swig it, but I never stopped because I was like, I, I can move for two hours. So when everybody else gets a water break and say that, I just keep going. I call it active rest. Active rest. You know, when, when coach was doing moves, I was stretching. I was watching, but I was stretching because flexibility was important. I thought that was very important to wrestling, so I would stretch. You know, so I had all these rules that I lived by when I was competing. And independence is one. I did most of my workouts. The majority of my training was spent alone compared to a coach. Being it. Me and my training partners, you know the old saying, surround yourself with good people. I, I, my, my, my roommate in college was a four-time All-American, four-time academic All-American, national champion Olympian. I lived with them. In fact, I paid double rent at one moment. I had a group of guys. They were okay. They were freshman friends with me. We, we got out of the dorms, we got in the apartment. This guy had a roommate, I said, dang, I want to live with, with Abe, he's good for me. And his roommate left. And he's like, I got an open bed. And so, to make sure nobody got that space, I paid double rent. I sucked it up for four months, I paid double rent. I was like scrounging by, and finally I subletted this, and I was in there, because I wanted to be with that guy. And this is what would happen. I'd be watching TV, and he'd come in all sweaty, and I'd be like, what'd you do? He'd be like, oh, I just ran five miles. And I'd be like, damn it, I gotta go run five miles. Because I wasn't going to be the lazy guy in the house. And you don't realize it, but when that saying, I know you've heard it, but it really does affect you. So the, the five closest people to you. If you're all even, that's not any good. If you're all even, and if I'm the best guy of the five, that's not good. Because when you're the best guy of the five, and this guy runs three miles, and you run three and a half. Right? You just do it a little bit more. But maybe that guy ain't winning. Maybe he's not winning. When you live with a national champion, he runs five and six miles. Oh, I gotta go run six and a half. So you, you don't realize it, you start to rub off. When you're in a tough room, it rubs off on you. It's important you have that good What else? Any more? Last one. What job would I do? Good question. Um, I did marketing. Okay, so here's what I tell you. When I was, when I, when I always said to myself, my, you know, my plan was to win a, a gold medal and be done. And then I said, I, I want to do something else. I just don't want to wrestle my whole life. And I thought someday I'm going to be a dad. And I, I want to be able to tell my kids, what'd you do, dad? Wrestle. What'd you do, dad? Cook. I'm like, I want to be able to say that. I did other things, right? I wanted to be well-rounded. So I left wrestling. I left it because I was a little pissed at the world for a time, right? And I left it and I said, I got to go do something else. And so I went into the business world. And I made an Olympic team in 2000, and then in 2002, I was hanging up brooms in the Home Depot. I, was doing. I remember saying to myself, I was on an Olympic team, now I'm hanging up brooms, I'm stopping the show. <laughs> you know? But it was good, because I started at the bottom in the business world, and that's what they wanted. So I had to learn from the ground up. I learned how people were in the stores, how they shopped, how they did things. Got done hanging up brooms, did a good job. They put me in what we call event marketing, which I hated. But event marketing, I was in charge of all the stuff that happened outside the NASCAR track. So I would organize our, our, our products, and I'd play games. We call them the darts. You know what the darts is? Anybody like NASCAR? You guys, man. Uh, the darts, the drunk ass race fans, that's what we call them, right? <laughs> These guys would just be on you. They want free product all the time. It's like, but I, I did that for 26 races, was gone, and then I went into channel marketing. It was interesting. I like talking about this because it was interesting too. And I learned packaging, and then I became a product manager. And um, 
I had a business that used to be $60 million. We used to make engines for cabinets. When they gave it to me, it was $18 million. It was dying, right? So they threw it on the new guy. So I had to like manage his business. And I always say I was over my head. I was in over my head. I did that for about five years. I was very uncomfortable doing that. I was uncomfortable walking into meetings where people were educated in business and I wasn't. And I literally was a coffee boy for a time, you know? And I was printing out the stuff, but I knew I was learning, right? People didn't know my background, it was good, you know? And, and um, I learned a ton, I was uncomfortable. And you know the saying, you only grow when? When you grow, when you're uncomfortable. When you're uncomfortable. So then I, I had enough of that, and I, I was doing a club on the side, and I decided, told my wife, I said, I'm ready to get back into college coaching. All that learning and budgeting, I was like, made me a better coach. Made me better at marketing my program. It made me better because sales and business is all about relationships. And you can't be a good coach unless you have good relationships. Your, your guys will know whether you just recruited them or whether you really wanted them. You know, They'll know the difference. They'll pick up on it right away. And every guy's got to be treated. Not, you only get 10 starters. And if you only take care of the starter and you don't take care of the number two guy, they'll start to go on in the third guy and the fourth guy because everybody needs somebody to kind of beat up on. And I always value non-scholarship kids because I honestly don't know if I wasn't on scholarship if I would have got my face pushed in the mat for four years and never wrestled and never went to sing. Like, those are for some pretty tough dudes. dudes. And my best relationships are with, with the starter guys, but man, really close with the guys that came the own way. Like, that's crazy to me, right, that they did it because I got the glory. I wore the singlet. Um, back to being uncomfortable, which is exactly why I'm at Navy. I was at Campbell, built it up, turned it into a good program, solid. And then um, I had job offers before Navy. And I just wasn't ready to go. And then I, and when I make decisions, I make it quick. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Navy opened up. I'm like, yeah, I think that's the place for me. And I'm uncomfortable here. I had to learn a lot. It's not where it's not where the alumni want it. They like to win. The thing about Navy is this world of do your best, Timmy. Come on, Johnny. It's plain and simple. We come to win. If you're not coming to win, don't put the Navy single on. That's how the alumni feel. Because what those guys do later in life is play for keeps and some stuff. You know? And that's what wrestling there is about. Like, we're coming to win. And, and so those are the guys we look for and we build them up. But get uncomfortable. If the room is it's comfortable, then you better be picking the biggest partner. If that's what you got to do, it's the only way you get better. All right, listen, I uh, really enjoyed being up here. I was telling you, I haven't done a clinic since 2019 of October because of COVID and stuff. So it's awesome to be back out. Great seeing some, some studs and probably be recruiting you later. You got it? All right. All right, good job, guys. Good work. Hey, real quick, real quick. Real quick. You guys realize that this is all about? Yeah. 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 Have you touched this many club partners at one time in life practice? West Shore, we're pretty grateful to have a lot of tough guys. But this is going to make the whole state of Ohio better. And then you know, to travel next year on this national team, it's going to be a great experience. I would highly encourage one day, every clinic, to have a guy like this today. I paid attention. I learned some things. Because I, I care, I want to be good, and I want to be able to help you guys. And I think it's really important that we take this serious, have a good time, and then have some more uh, clinics in different parts of the state. We highly encourage you to go there as well. And uh, boy, I think you did a great job today. Thank you. I mean, I think you're going to see the worst part. It's just great. Thank you. Jody, anything? I don't know anything in the practice wrestling is half the guys in here, let alone this one. So just thankful for everyone working really hard, getting out of the room. Everyone worked really hard. I appreciate that. Your partner appreciates that. Your parents appreciate that. Um, we're looking forward to seeing the rest of the combines because that does matter for consideration for the team and the team trials. Attendance does matter. We understand other things that are happening, but we want to try to get the guys to as many as possible and gals so that we can uh, make sure that we have the right kids on our team. Terry? Oh. Thanks, guys. Next one, June 13th at, uh, at the Knox Place. The Dog House in Milan, June 13th. Uh, Dave Habit. So.
Anyway, there you go. Um, I get that in there. Um, who watches slow? Who watched uh, Coach Kolak's video on slow? They watch that? That's who's the number player coach? Uh, yeah, I guess. The <laughs> marketing. The marketing. Um, when you're in my room, I told the early guys earlier, in my room, if there's ever a national champion room, you got to shake his hand. You can't leave until you shake hands with national champions. There's two in the room today. Uh, Coach Colot and Coach Rollins. So make sure you shake hands before you leave. These men have accomplished something that should be on your radar as one of your goals. It's going to be a wrestler. So make sure you get that done. Good job, guys. All right. Good work, guys. Take care and